Good morning and welcome back to Kuala Lumpur. I'm taking a little bit of a risk today because it seems to be pretty cloudy and we've had a lot of heavy rains lately. But I'm going off on a day trip out of Kuala Lumpur. I'm heading to an island called Pulau Katam, which translates as a crab island. Anyway, I'll tell you more about it later, but I have to head to the uh, KTM station and hop on my train to the town of Klang. As always, this is kind of a multi-stage journey. I took the uh, MRT to KL Central, and at KL Central, I'm hopping on a KTM train. And then I'm on the KTM train for maybe an hour, hour and 10 minutes, something like that. And that will take me to the coastal town of Klang. And once I get to Klang, all I have to do is walk across the street from the train station directly onto a ferry. And there should be a whole bunch of different boats that I can take to this island of Pulau Katam. And uh, yeah, <laughs> really looking forward to it. I've got a lot more to say about this island, but I'll save it till later because I have to go catch my train. It's pretty busy here at KL Central. All the early morning commuters heading to work. So there's the uh, schedule for the uh, commuter train. And I'm hoping to take the train at 7.41 and it's departing from platform three. Looks like there's another one at 746, but that's new to me. I didn't even see that one on the schedule. So if I miss the 41, I can always take the 46, I guess. That is the uh, KTM ticket counter behind me there where I bought my ticket. And I keep running into trouble at this place because every time I go there, I mean, I'm used to buying a ticket, like a one-way ticket to wherever I'm going. But lately, every time I do that, they give me one of these cards and they charge me three ringgit for the card and then they top it up with five ringgit worth of credit. So they say, that's eight ringgit, please. And I try to tell them, I, I don't really want another card. I actually have two or three of these already because I keep forgetting to bring them. They're back in my hotel room and now I have yet another card and um, all I really want to buy is the ticket and not the card. But no matter what I say to them, I always end up with another card. So I've got a little collection going of these things. And here we are on platform three, starting at KL Central and heading all the way down to the very bottom to Klang. I've done this uh, trip uh, quite a few times before <clears throat> because I've gone to Sumatra quite often and I've taken the ferry boat from Klang across to Sumatra. But this is the first time I've tried to take one of the uh, local boats heading out to one of the offshore islands. So it's a, a familiar experience, but also a uh, brand new one. And here's my train waiting for me. And that's the full name <clears throat> of our destination right here. Hela Buhan Klan. And these are really nice trains, very comfortable. They have nice uh, cushion seating. And then they even have um, like uh, individual seats there. You can sit facing forward if you like. And something I noticed on these trains every time I've taken them is just how many of the windows are shattered like this one there the one right beside it here is broken as well and I've had a lot of conversations with people about what's causing all these uh, broken windows and there's a lot of theories but I'm not sure what the uh, truth is the 
train left exactly on time, 7.41, so that's good. If I check the schedule, and it actually takes a lot longer to uh, get to Klang than I thought. It's about an hour and 25 minutes to get there. Now, I thought it was like an hour or less than an hour, but that's fine with me. But while I've been sitting here, I realized that I really am in the car, broken windows. I pointed out <clears throat> the two behind me that are broken, and then I looked across from me, and that window is broken. Right there. And then I looked over to my right, and in the rest of the train, those two windows are broken as well. I have, I'm not sure about on this side, but uh, probably one of those is broken too. So something is going wrong with these windows. This one has an impact point right here, you know, as if somebody threw a rock and hit it. And this one too, maybe, you know, it's like a, a central area here. So maybe someone threw a rock at it. Oh. It just seems odd to me that so many people here would be throwing rocks at the train. So, we get to uh, settle in for an hour and a half journey to uh, Klan. I don't know much about the boats that go out to these islands, except what I saw online. And there appear to be two basic boats. They're the older boats, which are these like long cigar shaped boats. You go inside and it's air conditioned inside, but you can't go outside. So your only view is out the side windows. And I believe one of those boats is leaving at 930. If the online schedule is to be believed and it's about uh, 10 after 9 now so that's perfect timing but there's a more modern boat called the Alibaba and this is a bigger boat with two levels you can go inside into the air-conditioned lower portion or you can go outside on top which is open air and then you get a nice view of your surroundings and that's the boat I'd really like to take but on the weekdays it doesn't go very often and I think there's a boat leaving at 10.30 and 12.30. So I'd have to wait over an hour to take that boat. But that's based on schedules that I saw online. Who knows whether they're accurate or not? I have no idea. I didn't even realize it, but while I was talking there, both trains left. <laughs> I turned around and they were gone. I didn't even notice when they were leaving. Again, that's something to do with uh, taking video while I'm doing these things. It takes up a lot of my brain power and I find out that I'm a lot dumber than I normally am. For example, I had that big issue with the card. I wanted to buy a ticket for the train and they gave me a pass card when I didn't want one. And then I remembered that I could have used my MRT touch and go card on the KMT line. 
So I could have just used my card and beat my way in. I didn't even have to go to the ticket counter. But as usual, I wasn't uh, thinking. <laughs> a little bit of a technical note for today. If uh, the image seems to be jumping around a little bit and maybe the audio is jumping around, that's because I'm using both my Panasonic and the GoPro. I'm shooting on the GoPro right now. And the way I'm doing this is I've created something of a Frankenstein's monster camera here. I've got the Panasonic mounted on my tripod. I have the GoPro mounted on top of the Panasonic. And then I have my new Rode Wireless Go mounted on top of that. And not only that, I have a audio cable with a Y splitter running the audio from the microphone into the GoPro and the Panasonic at the same time. All of this is brand new technology. I have no idea if any of it is really working. Um, can't really show it to you. Oh, actually I can. What I'll do is I'll take a picture of it with my smartphone and I'll show you what this uh, rig looks like. One other technology note is that I am using a brand new Rode Wireless Go. Um, I bought a Rode Wireless Go a few days ago and I've been very happy with it, but then it suddenly started to uh, malfunction. So the, uh, the power button on the transmitter wouldn't work anymore. You're supposed to hold it down for three seconds and then it powers on. And then when you want to turn it off, you hold it down for three seconds and then it turns off. And mine stopped doing that. I would hold the button down and nothing would happen. I'd hold it for you know 15 seconds, 20 seconds and nothing would happen and I would have to do it over and over and over again before it finally uh, shut down. And same thing for uh, turning on. So I brought it back to the store and uh, they gave me an exchange right away. They just grabbed one from the display and gave me a uh, new one. So maybe this is a problem that a lot of people have had because they didn't even ask me about it. They didn't even test it for themselves. I told them what was wrong and they just gave me a new one and I guess sent it back to road. So I'm using a brand new, brand new Rode Wireless Go today. Now here's the card that I didn't really need. And let's see how much it costs to take this trip. Oh, insufficient balance. <laughs> Hello. I don't have enough balance on my card, I think. One ringgit. One ringgit? Okay. So the whole system is letting me down. After getting a card I didn't need, and I told them I wanted to go to Pelabuhan Klang, and uh, they put, charge me eight ringgit, and they put five ringgit on the card, but that's not actually enough to uh, get me here. It uh, cost six ringgit to go from KL Central to here. So I had to put one more ringgit on the card. Now let's see if I can get out. Ah. There we go. It was actually five ringgit 40 cents. So I still have a 60 cents credit on my card. <laughs> And right across the road, like literally I'm staring at it, that is the uh, boat terminal to take the, I the boat out to the islands. And I'm standing beside the water here, and I guess these are some of the boats heading out to Palau Katam. And that's the walkway heading out to those boats. And that's where I'm going next. There it is, the jetty Pulau Katam. 
the jetty for Crab Island. So this is the cigar boat I was talking about, long and thin, air-conditioned speed ferry. Looks like one way is nine ringgit, round trip 16, something like that. And over here is the sign for the new boat, the Alibaba Pulau Katam. And you can see that boat has an upper deck. So I'm gonna find out when that boat leaves first. Okay, just over okay. there. Yes. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. No? Okay. okay, well that worked out really well. Man, talk about good timing. They're firing up the engine just as I'm arriving. So we're on our way. I don't know whether uh, you can hear me over the sound of the engine and the wind and everything like that, but we'll give it a try. I've got both cameras recording, Panasonic on me, GoPro kind of looking uh, ahead of us there. And I heard, I'm told that the trip only takes about uh, 30 minutes. And since it is so noisy, maybe I will wait until we get to the island to talk about it a little bit more. No uh, visit to a boat or a train would be complete without checking out the bathroom. And here it is. Yeah, pretty much what you'd expect. Some water flowing into the uh, into the ocean. We've got a sink. And uh, <laughs> you've got me looking very uh, wind blown. Looks like it's almost time for another uh, another haircut. I think. Things are a little bit out of control. We're pulling up at the dock. And there's the uh, cigar boat. I guess it left uh, pretty much the same time we did, and it's arriving at the same time. So there's no uh, speed difference between the two types of boats. This, by the way, is the uh, card that they gave me for the Alibaba boat, and it has their schedule on the back. So it looks like they have boats going from here, from the, from Klang to the island and then from the island back to Klang almost every hour throughout the entire day. But I, when I looked online, there seemed to be a different schedule for weekends and weekdays. But um, here it gives you an idea of uh, when there might be boats. So reading the whole card, it does look like some of these boats are only running on weekends and the holidays. In fact, this boat, 930 boat, is listed as being only for a weekend or a holiday but it was running today, so maybe I uh, just got lucky. And this is the uh, ticket for the boat. It cost 18 ringgit, so it's nine. I got a round trip ticket. Um, I thought I was buying a one way actually, but uh, they just automatically uh, gave me a round trip. The cost, uh, so it's nine ringgit one way and nine ringgit to go back again. And I guess I can just show up at any time I want and hop on the next boat leaving. And in fact, a boat is uh, leaving right now. And it is 10.30 right now, so the uh, schedule seems to be pretty accurate. And this is the uh, 10.30 Alibaba back to Klang. Just a technical note as I leave the dock and head into the uh, village. I'm really enjoying having the two cameras mounted one on top of each other. I'm not filming with them at the same time, but it's really nice having both of them available and I can just use one or the other whenever I feel like it. I just flip it around and shoot with the GoPro like I am now because I know it's so simple and easy and it gets everything in focus and exposes everything really nicely. And then if I want more of a close up of something, something that looks a little bit nicer, then I switch over to the uh, Panasonic. Uh, 
I get kind of the best of both worlds. And it's a very obvious rig, you know, this giant thing that I'm carrying around now. But I don't mind that. It's not like I'm going to blend into the scenery, right? I look different no matter what. So if I'm carrying a big camera, it doesn't bother me. Hello.